Eli, the father, he saw what was going on and he told his son, sons, what you are doing is not right. What you are doing is not right. But he didn't do anything about it. He thought he was justified because he said something and he didn't agree and yet he joined in their sin because he did not stop it. He continued to go to their pages and listen to more. He continued to follow their ministries and give them platform even though they were misusing it. And he became judged with the very sin that he didn't agree with because he did not separate himself from it. And we are Eli. We are Eli. God has been revealing the sin in his priests. Our teachers, our leaders, our prophets has been exposed. And we think that we are separate because we don't agree with it, but we haven't really separated ourselves from it. Oh God, we cry for mercy. We cry for mercy, God. We cry for mercy, God. Let your mercy come upon us. Let your mercy fall on us, God. The Lord sent a man to Eli and said, what you've done is despised the holy things. That word despise literally means to treat as of little value. To treat as of little value. To not give weight to. To look upon with contempt. It's not worth my attention. We've been so busy with our lives, we've been so busy with our plans, we've been so busy with our own callings and our own destinies, we have despised the holy things of the Lord. We have despised the sacred assembly, we have despised the place of prayer. The people of God we have not judged rightly the body of Christ and wonder why many are sick and dying among us. Oh God, forgive us for not treating as holy that which is holy. Forgive us for not treating as holy that which is holy. Father, forgive us for not recognizing the judgment that has come upon your people. In the midst of this, I wanna give a little instruction because some are getting this, but some are still looking out. Identificational repentance means you have to own it. If you don't own it, you can't repent for it, which means that you can't let it go. But God calls a prophetic people and sometimes prophetic gatherings to be able to identify with, not to point against, but to identify with to come under so that we can bring it to the altar and see it removed. And if we do not identify with, we cannot carry it to the place where it gets purified. It's that identifying with without judgment that allows this to have effect. And this is not just something that's happening in this room. We've entered into something bigger than what's in this room. Don't allow that judgment and the pointing of the finger to come into your heart. Lord, forgive us, for we have sinned. We have sinned. We have not treated you as holy. We have not separated the holy from the profane.
Lord, we have spent our times building paneled houses when you've called us to build the temple of the Lord, a house for your presence. But we built monuments to what was instead of making space for you now. God, forgive us. God, forgive us. And in the midst of this going on, where Eli is not dealing with the sin and the people are continuing, Hophni and Phinehas are continuing in their sin, the nation goes out to war. Difficulties come and they go out to war and they're not winning the battle and so they, they grab hold of the ark like a talisman. And they think to manipulate God to give them the victory that they hadn't given by pointing at what was. And God lets his presence be taken over by those that are uncircumcised of heart. God, we have looked at your presence, we have looked at your promise as if it was a talisman and you did not require purity for there to be victory. We, we sought to do it in our own way, we sought to do it with our programs, we sought to do it with our way of doing things. We wanted to manipulate you to give, you, give us the victory that we wanted when we wanted it. And we did not rend our hearts, we did not rend our garments. We puffed up our chest in pride and said, but God must do it because I'm called. Oh God, forgive us for the pride of heart. Forgive us for the pride of heart. And we would treat you like a good luck charm. God allowed his presence to be carried by the enemy in a way that he did not design to get his presence back to where it belonged because he wanted to be back with his people. And they created a cart and they sent it back and the presence came back to the land, but it only was in houses. It was only in locations, it was not in the land. What was going on in America 20 years ago is not going on, but we pretended like it was. And there's been houses that have been blessed but as a nation, we have not been. And yet we pretend that we are. Oh God. Oh God, forgive us for our blindness to our lack. And David arises to bring back the ark into the center, to bring the presence back into the center, but he doesn't know how. He saw what happened last time. He saw 
how God allowed his presence to be carried on a cart and he just assumed, I'll make another cart. And we'll carry it back into the land. We'll carry it back into the center. And they began to celebrate and think everything was as it was. It looked like the beginnings of a revival. And in the midst of it, the oxen stumble. And Uzzah reaches out his hand by the power of man to make sure that God looks good. The power of man to make sure that God looks good. And the Lord struck him dead. Perez Uzzah, for there the Lord broke out against Uzzah. Lord, we've looked at what was. We've looked at what happened in the previous season and we thought that's how we should do it. We have relied upon tradition. We have relied upon the patterns of the past and we have not sought your face for the strategy for now. We have relied upon our skill. We've relied upon what we could do. We've relied upon our preaching and we have not looked to your face to figure out what now. We have not treated your presence as holy. God, we've looked on the revivals of the past and said, we'll do that again. We'll do that pattern again. We, we looked at what worked yesterday and we said, let's repeat that again. We're gonna carry the presence of God back into the center of the church. We're gonna have another revival. We're gonna do it. We know how to do it. We've done it before. We've seen it before. Oh God, we've relied upon our skill. We've relied upon the gifts that you've given us. And we have not relied upon your voice to carry your presence back to the church. Forgive us for our programs that keep you out. Forgive us for our trust in the way that we've done things. Forgive us in our trust for the sounds of yesterday. Forgive us for our trust in the messages of yesterday and the truths that were revealed. God, teach us how to hear your voice now and treat you as holy. Not take lightly the presence of God. Not take lightly the invitation to carry the glory. God, forgive us. Forgive us for a form of revival that lacks power. Forgive us for a form of worship that lacks intimacy. Forgive us for a form of preaching that lacks conviction. Forgive us for a form of religious activity that lacks passion. Oh God, we're weak, we're blind, we're naked, and we think that we're clothed and we think that we see, we think we know what's going on, God. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for the eye salve that you promised that we could see. I'm asking you to clothe us so that we would no longer be naked. Your church is naked. And nobody is speaking it. The emperor has no clothes on. And nobody's saying it. God, your church is naked. We're naked. Clothe us. Our shame has been exposed yes, to the nation around us, to the peoples, and they do not tremble with fear anymore at a holy God. They laugh. Oh God. We are at fault, oh God. Change us. Give the high self to your church. Uncover the eyes of your seers. Uncover the ears of your people. Uncover the heads. 
so that we can see, so that we can hear, so that we can respond, that your people would not be blinded any longer. Father, specifically in the prophetic, we heard your voice and you said that you were raising up a trumpet and you raised up a trumpet. You brought someone into a position of authority and we rebuilt the cart and we said, this is the presence of the Lord and we did not realize that we had not sought you again and we put our hope in what was not you, and we have been judged. The prophetic has become Uzzah. Oh God, let us return. Let us return. Let us return, oh God. Let us return, oh God. We want to hear your voice. We don't want to hear the political spirit. We don't want to hear the party spirit. We don't want to hear popular opinion. We don't want to hear what people want us to say. We want to hear you, God. We want to be ones that would stand in the council and carry the word of the Lord that would call his people back from their sins so that they would walk in the way that pleases you. God, raise up a company that would stand in the council of the Lord. Not say they did, but never got there. Raise up a purity again. 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 Raise up purity again. Raise up purity again. Purity in the prophetic, oh God. Purity. Oh God, forgive us. We have listened for what would make us popular. We have listened for what would build our platform. We have listened for what would build our, our, our financial base. We've listened for what would sell more books and sell more conferences. And we have not listened for the heart of God. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, oh God. We've turned the prophetic movement into a bunch of Christian psychics. Fortune telling for what the people want to hear. And we have not heard the word of the Lord. God, forgive us. Forgive your church, God. Forgive me, God. Lord, we come back to your law. We come back to your word. Lord, we want the ark to be the center again. We want the ark to come back to the city of God. We want the presence to mark us. We want to be ones where a cloud and fire is over us no longer a laughing stock of the people, but the glorious church arising in authority and power. We want it, God, but unless you tell us how to do it, we can't. We will never get there. You show us. Father, we break all agreement 
with any confidence that has been upon a spiritual pedigree because of a spiritual platform, because of a spiritual experience that happened before. We break all agreement with every confidence on anything that comes except our names are written in the book of life. And we make a decree that there shall be no confidence but confidence in the Lord. Every false confidence will be like the reed that you said Egypt was. It would break off in the hand of whoever tries to lean on it and end up piercing them. Every false confidence has been judged. 